Hello everybody, Ian Robson here for our episode of Wild the Canal. Alright, we got things going on today. As you recall from the previous episode, I said episode 15, which is this episode, would be the final episode for Landia Canal. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and harvest those sugar beets that we planted not too long ago. They are ready to be topped right now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's also grab, I think, so, well, the first thing we need to do is we all, we need to grab the topper so we can top the sugar beets. And then, uh, we need to grab the harvester as well. So, the topper itself isn't very expensive. It actually fertilizes at the same time, uh, which is kind of interesting the way that works. Uh, so as you can see, I have the John Deere already prepped and ready to go. Well, it's here at least. I don't know why I'd say prepped and ready to go, but it's here. Anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and get the topper, which is in tractors. No, it's in miscellaneous, I think it is. Oh, that's still forestry stuff. Here we go. Forestry miscellaneous. Alright, so the thing we are looking for is... Where is it here? Is it here or in mowers? I can never remember. You think I would remember these things, but no, must be in mowers then. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that from the mower section, which is right here. Perfect. And of course, it's around the back. I'm going to turn my fan off because I realize it's still on. I'll be back in a sec. And I'm back. <laughs> I could have not showed that, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I try to turn my fan off whenever I record because it's a loud fan. I don't know if you guys notice the difference, but I can definitely notice the difference. Uh, so what happens is I tend to try to talk louder than the fan, and it's never a good thing. Especially when you talk all day, too. Never works out well. All right, so let's get this guy rolling over here. So this is the topper for those who have never seen it before. It's the same topper we used in Iron Horse, actually. It's just, oh, don't need to attach the PTO. All right, and what I'll do is I'll set this guy on, uh, I think, course play. I think I'll use this guy for course play, and I think I'll actually do the harvest in uh, myself. Yeah. I think that's the way I'll do it. It feels a bit heavy on the back of this tractor. I don't think I should need like a more powerful tractor than this, but maybe I do, I don't know. Anyhow, there's that one random silage bale still. <sighs> you think I would get it. Alright, so I also said I would do a little bit of forestry in this episode as well. I honestly have no idea where the forestry area is. Hmm. I'll have to figure that out in a second. Alright, so let's get this guy rolling on this field over here. So, as you can see, the beets are right here. They do need to be topped. So let's go ahead and calculate the field edge. Which field is this field? 44. Might as well set it up properly. There we go. And put it up for field work. I don't know how wide this implement is. Oh, three meters, I guess. Okay. Start from whichever corner. And we could do as many headlands as possible, I think, because that's actually going to be better than going up and down. Head north. I'm sure it seems like a good thing. And we'll use field number 44. So hopefully this is going to work the way I want it to. We'll see. If not, I can just lower it myself and go from there. Nope, looks like I'm going to have to do it myself, or at least uh, <clears throat> or at least set it up for myself. Alright, there we go. That should be able to do that. We'll get that started at the very least. Uh, the next thing we need to buy is the actual harvester itself. We're going to use the in-game harvester tried, tested, and true, so to speak. Should be under Grimmy, I believe. Uh, sugar beets. Harvesting potatoes. Uh, 
harvesting the sugar beets. Okay. And that is $98,000. Of course, that one's on the back, too. There we go. All right, so we have a little bit of extra cash. So let's just take a quick little peek here uh, at the, not the placeable stuff, at the forestry stuff. What do we have here? Uh, toolbox with chainsaw. Okay. So I might just cut down some trees and delimit them or something. I don't know. Um, I have to find the area first for forestry. I think I want to say it's up there, but I'm not really sure. We're going to find out here in a second. Alright, let's grab this guy here. There we go. Perfect. So the reason why I set that other guy on course play just to do that, because then we can at least, you know, bring the stuff back there while it's doing its, its thing, basically. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know how long it's going to take, but he's going pretty fast. I set him to 20 kilometers an hour, so... You should be just rocking through there. I hope people liked the Grimmy SL750 uh, Farming in Real Life video I put out. Uh, I guess it would be today, uh, but by the time you see this, probably won't be till next week or something. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed that. So this is kind of like another variation of that, except it's for sugar beets. I'm not sure what the big difference between the two are, like in terms of uh, equipment itself. Like I, I, I thought you could use the same equipment, but apparently you cannot. Or similar equipment. Like, for example, that same Grimmy I showed you guys in the video, you can use that same one for uh, carrots with an adapter, basically. Alright, so he's not quite done yet. Alright, so let's grab the Unimog then. And uh, the seeds, we don't need the seeds. I forgot how fast this thing is. It feels so wobbly when you're inside like this, but it seems, you know, relatively stable in comparison to some other vehicles I've driven. Like, it really sticks to the road, which is nice, because a lot of, not a lot of them do, so... Anyhow. Let's get this uh, hooked up to the thing I want to get. Uh, and, of course, the thing I want to get is that little uh, chainsaw thing. this thing right here. Steel chain. I've actually used a uh, steel, however you want to say it, chainsaws before. They are actually uh, fairly light. Well, the one I used was a fairly light one. Apparently one of the nice reasons to get a steel uh, over like a Husqvarna or uh, some other brands is because it is uh, lighter, actually. Husqvarna's apparently are heavier and all, but do better in the winter. That's as far as I know, at least. I'm going to test that, see if it's that area over there first. Just to see, because it's, you know, we're relatively close to it already, so. It looks like it's right there, but I don't know for sure. It make, would make sense, because it's close to the forestry area. I don't know if... Uh, that thing right there I'm talking about. This also has a pretty cool path through it. I discovered a while back. Alright, so... Do I have to plant trees first? I thought this would have trees that are, are already. Do I have to? Let's just leave it running. I don't even know how to pick up the chainsaw. Uh, oh, there you go. I think I can delete in this one. just looks that way. Okay, that's deceiving. That really is deceiving, because you'd think you'd be able to cut most of these trees up in here. Just because of the way it's situated. But I don't see any... Because you need the little red mark in order to cut them, I believe. Uh, none of those have on any... Are these ones? No. These ones don't appear to either. Where the heck are they? Uh, I guess it's not up here. Maybe it's the other side then. I don't see any marks on these though. 
definitely looks like a logging area though. That's strange. That's the strange part about that, like, maybe it's the end here. See, it's weird though, because it's really misleading, because if you look right here, there's a stump, for example. I don't, uh... Nothing that indicates that it's a quote unquote forestry area. But like stuff like this kind of throws you off a little bit. You think that that's a forestry area? I don't know. Anyways, I've never been back here before. Huh. That's kind of strange. Hmm. As yeah, I've said many times before, it's a really nice looking map actually. Lots and lots of stuff to go on. Go, well, lots of stuff to do on the map. Uh, if you like forestry, I guess. Uh, don't need to go that way. Let's go this way. Hmm. I know my new Holland's not done because it isn't telling me it's done yet, but. Uh, we're going to see if we can't find this forestry area. Uh, biogas bakery. No, I don't want to go to those places. Hmm. Maybe it's back in there then? I don't know. We're gonna, just going to go check on the new hall in a second there. He should be done a little bit. Enough so we can start harvesting at the very least. Uh, because we are trying to harvest uh, our sugar beets. I think I, I bet you I have to plant some first, which I really don't want to do because I have to wait for them to grow. Uh, I don't know why there's no one unplanted here already. Alright, uh, nope. Wow, they really aren't. I'm surprised by this. Hmm. Oh, there's some more logs there. Maybe... Nope. Hmm. Well, it's a nice forestry area. It's a nice forest, but I can't go down any trees, apparently. Maybe it's a protected forest, and that's why it's not letting me... Oh, that's why I don't see any. Well, I don't just try, I guess. Uh, oh, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I know, like... Yeah. I know you can only cut down trees that have the mark on them, so... This seems like an area you'd be able to cut down trees. Like, maybe it's just me, but... This kind of seems like a forestry area. What's this back up in here? Or maybe this is where it's supposed to be? I guess technically you could plant them anywhere and cut them down anywhere, but... I have not put any down, so I guess I can't cut any down. Well then. Alright, well. Back to this guy. Oh, he's doing a terrible job now. Holy cow. Alright, this is what happens when you, uh... When you do this type of scenario. Or when you... Oh, you can I go with level 2? Okay, well, that's good to know, at least. Alright, so let's... Well, I got a fair number. Just the turns is what he's missing, basically. Uh, so, let's just do this, this, and this. Do a little bit of... Do a little bit of the cutting with uh, the GPS mod. That'll probably make our lives a little bit easier. Oh my goodness. What did he do there? <clears throat> The problem is, this is like a square field, but it's not square in the, um, I don't know how to say it. It's not square, like north, south, east, west square, uh, and that's how course play works. Uh, it can't, not this version at least, maybe another version, maybe a future version will have that capability, I don't know. That's probably good enough to get started. Anyways, let's grab this guy right here. Because the whole idea behind this episode, of course, is to harvest some sugar beets, so we're going to do that now. Do we need to unfold? Yes, there we go. Pipe out. Alright, so let's get some sugar beets here. How big is the actual... Uh, I did hit... Uh, Apparently we can go that fast. Perfect, look at that. Uh, so I'm going to use a GPS mod for this only because I know I'm going to miss something if I don't. 
still going pretty fast though. Like 20 kilometers seems really fast, especially for a root vegetable. I don't know if you guys have ever harvested a root vegetable, but you have to move a ton of dirt uh, in order to get at the vegetables themselves. So like potatoes, for example, or sugar beets, you really have to move a lot of vegetables, or a lot of dirt, sorry, in order to get the actual amount, in order to get the actual amount. Like, so like, this is what happens with potatoes. There's like a huge mound in the middle, and then you have to basically, so here's the mound. You have to like take the mound out from underneath, and the potatoes grow like in the mound itself. So you're basically lifting all that dirt up. And it's not just like one, you know, once. You have to do it like continuously the whole time. So if you're using like a big, you know, six row windrower for potatoes, yes, they actually have that, a six row potato windrower. Uh, if they have, if they have, you know, something that big, you really gotta have a pretty powerful tractor in order to, uh, in order to do that. So, there we go. I like how they actually puts the offset in here nicely. I thought it was going to be a bit of a pain, but with a GPS mod, it actually works better than, uh, or appears to be working better than it would with course play, actually. I think. Maybe course play would do the offset too, but the GPS mod does a pretty good job of it. But yeah, I mean, you can see that down in there. So that's basically, you're, you're pulling up four rows of dirt all at the same time. So I think you actually need a fairly, I don't know, a relatively powerful tractor in order to in order to actually harvest sugar beets I don't know I don't know for sure but it just seems that way because the amount of material you have to move right because it's not like a small amount by not by a long shot Ooh. there we go it's funny a lot of the newer potato oops, a lot of the newer potato equipment, specifically, um, doesn't have the capability of having anybody on it. Uh, so, like this style, obviously, there's no space for anybody to have anybody on it, uh, which is more common these days. Only because um, it's more common because there's less risk involved for the farmer, basically. Uh, so, by not having anybody on the machine at all, it decreases the risk. So, what generally happens is uh, for a lot of crops, specific types of crops, they, uh, for a lot of specific type of crops, they hire people out, like out off the farm, basically, in order to get the job done, and if you hire somebody off the, off the farm, depending on how you do it, like, if you just do it through a newspaper or something like that, it's like under the table sort of thing, something along those lines, I don't know, um, then you probably don't have the appropriate, uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't have the appropriate, uh, I don't know you call it, insurance, I guess it would be. Uh, in order to, uh, in order to actually, you know, in case something actually happens, they'd have the insurance there to do something, so, I don't know. It's a bit annoying, though, that we have to actually plant some trees first. I had intentions to, I should have planted some, uh, the other day. I still can, I suppose. Can I hire a worker with this? No. Oh, well. Maybe what I'll have to do is I'll have to do forestry on a different map then. I have a map in mind I could play, do some random forestry stuff on. Alright. I was going to go, oops, let's go right here. There we go. You didn't see that. It's not obvious at the moment, so. Anyways. Yeah, this is like, this is like one of the few times, well not a few times, I guess it's been a few times. One of the times I've done, sh I've actually uh, done sugar beets or planted sugar beets. I don't do it very often for whatever reason. And I think on the Idaho map, we're actually going to raise some sugar beets too. Um, or not sugar beets, potatoes, sorry. Because apparently in Idaho, it's a common thing to raise sugar beets. Uh, there we go. Or at least I've been told at least. So. I'll have to look into that. I'm sure it is, but... Where's that uni mod? Where did I leave the uni mod? Way up there, I think. It looks like you can just cut down any of the trees on this map almost, but apparently you can't. It just has that, you know, look to them. Like, if you look at... Um, I'm pointing. I don't know why I'm pointing. Uh, if you look at the ones back in there, 
Um, <clears throat> you'll be able to see those. Oops, I'm totally full. And it looked like you could uh, you could hire, you could cut those down, but you can't. All right, so let's go unload. Probably what would happen is you'd have the trailer come to you and not you go to the trailer, but the New Holland's doing something else or trying to do something else at the moment. There we go. Maybe that's what I'll do is I'll uh, get this guy. And do the rest of this little part right here. Yeah, the funny thing is it actually fertilizes when you do this. So I guess this is meant for, I don't know if it says no, it says, uh, but it might say cutting down, uh, no, it might say cutting down cover crops too. In addition to, it also, mulch, oh, okay. Doesn't say, uh, but I know from some of the some of the cover crops you can act what happen, I think what happens is you can cut them and then it will uh, it will actually fertilize I think all right so let's just take this other part off of here and drop it down there and then we'll grab the trailer like so and then now we'll be able to actually drive it to <laughs> the tractor because in reality that's what you have to do here we go let's grab this guy and head back to it all right uh that should be good let's turn it on this thing actually imagine being pretty heavy i don't know if it actually says how much horsepower you need for this thing um but i'm pretty sure you, you would need a fairly beefy tractor in order to pull this like this is a 175 horsepower tractor so I think it should be enough, but uh, like I said, because it is a four row sugar beet harvest, you are picking up a lot of sugar beets all at the same time. This thing would probably just fill up like there's no tomorrow, I would think at least, but I don't know. I'm not an expert in sugar beets, so I don't know how much horsepower you actually need for this situation. I wonder if, I don't know if, does anybody, <laughs> let me know if you guys know about um, sugar beets. And let me know what the situation is. So, like, let's say if the sugar beet ha the sugar beets have soft skins, for example. Um, I know potatoes can have a soft skin, uh, which is one of the reasons why you tend to, when you harvest new potatoes, you have to charge more because you have to be more delicate, and you have to essentially do a lot of it by hand uh, if you want an unbruised potato, essentially. Uh, so I don't know if it's. I'm sure it's something similar with sugar beets, but. People who actually eat sugar beets, I'm not sure. I know people eat beets, but I'm not a robot sugar beets, so. Anyways, let's unload once again. Yeah, this is actually a nice looking harvester. So there's the, uh, I don't know, people, some people call it the, uh, oh, what do they call it? The C, oh my god, the C conveyor. There we go. And by C conveyor, it just means that it looks like a C. That's the only reason why it's called that, basically. Or as far as I know, at least. Some people might call it something different. I don't know. Um, no hands. That's because of GPS mod, if you're wondering. Um, because it makes a big difference, especially with uh, with this type of thing. Actually, if you're using a single row potato harvester, it would actually probably make a big difference there, too, now that I think about it. So, anyhow. So I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do forestry on a different map. It looks like uh, I was I had intention to do it on this map, but uh, that doesn't appear to be any readily available trees, as I as I thought there would be, uh, which is the reason why. Let me take another look quickly here. Oh, this is still. I keep forgetting that why doesn't turn this thing off. It does for most. But not for this. See, like, look, there's these stumps here, so you think you can cut things down. I don't know. 
I've been misled. Nope, doesn't seem to be anything around here. That's unfortunate. But definitely seems as if, you know, this is an area where you would do forestry or something. Because I don't, I don't know, I just don't could drive over the trees. Maybe we'll go further back and see if we can find something. I mean, I have the chainsaw now. I can cut down trees and stuff. Uh, I guess this, this little area kind of reminds me of the Alps a little bit. Uh, for those people who have played on that map. I think uh, Dirt Harbor has played on it a while back now. And a couple other people have played on it, so it kind of reminds me of that. Oh, you can keep going back into the woods. How far does it go back? Jeez. Pretty far back. I don't know if there's a... Is there a big lumber industry in uh, Germany? Let me know if you guys know, because I have no idea. This is the reason why I'm asking the question. Hmm. Nope. Doesn't seem to be anything you can cut down here. I don't see any little marks or... We're all the way over here. here. And I can't drive that way, Ian. You can drive through the trees, but you can't do anything else, so... Hmm. That's strange. Well, I wonder why that's the case. I don't know. Uh, there we go. It's a nice view, though, from up here. There's the train. There we go. It's funny, I was watching Hitman uh, 82 the other day, and I found out something, something kind of random. I realized that you can actually press, you can hold down I. So, like, let's say I'm in the middle here and I want to close it. I can just hold down I, and it'll close it completely. Which is really nice, actually, because there's so many times where I'm like, hey, close, close, and I hit it like a bazillion times. Uh, so that was a good little tip from Hitman82. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> so, having said all that, let me know what map you would like to see me play on next. I'm, I'm done with this map, basically. Um, it's a nice map. It's fun to play on. Check it out. Uh, but let me know what, what we'd like to see on um, the next map, maybe a British map or something. I have one in mind I could play on easily, like Smithfield, for example, is one I mentioned. Um, if there's another map you'd like to see, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Uh, no Spring Hill Valley, because I've already played that map, and no Spring Hill Farm either. Uh, maybe there's another map, though. I haven't seen any other new maps that have come out. Land of Italy I probably won't play on just because Hitman's playing on it. Uh, just because I, I don't know, I have a, a thing where if someone else is playing on a map, then I'm a little like, mm, maybe I won't play on that map, so. That's just me, though. I actually talked to Hitman about it, and he was like, yeah, man, go ahead. I don't care. Because um, he was going to play on, the, he, I, yeah, he was going to play on Land of Italy, and I was talking to him about it, and he's like, yeah, man, if you want to play on it, go ahead. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all, so. Maybe I will. I don't know. Probably not. Alright, sweet. That is another load of sugar beets. So that should be a full load. So that was like, what, four loads, I think? Uh, four loads worth of sugar beets. So this thing probably should be pretty close to full. Because it holds 21,000 liters. So that will be almost uh, four loads. Almost. Yep, that's about right. Anyways, we shall finish off with selling this load of sugar beets to the sugar factory. I think there's a sugar factory here. Freight station sugar factory. Alright. Let's see if we can't find the... Oh, there's a train coming. I probably shouldn't drive on the tracks. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, so... Let's see if we can find it. I know the freight station's over here. Oh, right there. And the sugar... Is that it down there? Or there? I can't remember. It's funny. I think it was Greg Thomas wanted me to get a new cedar. And I realized, I said, yeah, sure, I'll get a new cedar. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is going to be the last episode. So it's like, well... 
technically I did get a new seater. I got the Hassia, I suppose. Um, but not really a uh, not a real seater per se. Is this thing having a hard time staying on the ground? Seems that way. Seems a bit light in the front. Anyhow. Alright, so we can turn the GPS mod off. I don't know why it's on. Uh, yes. Actually, interesting enough, I was looking through mods the other day and I found an interesting mod that works at... It's a BGA mod. So basically it's kind of like you customize the... Uh, you customize the BGA a little bit more. Biogas, freight station. Um, so basically it's like... <clears throat> You put your hay, you can put hay in there, you can put straw in there, you can put manure, and you make energy, and it shows you how much energy you make based on, um, how much energy you, you make based on, you know, what, what's in there. And you have to keep filling it every single day to keep it running. Uh, it's kind of an interesting mod. Uh, it was all in German, unfortunately, uh, but it was still interesting to have a look, to look at, uh, how it works, actually, so... I thought it was interesting, at least. It would. It's kind of like adds like another level onto the game. I guess that's the idea behind it. So, all right, freight station, you are over here. If memory serves. Uh, freight station, turn here. All right. Oh, I never realized. I uh, have never seen it. Bees. Those are bees. Actually, in Ontario, I'll tell you a kind of interesting story. In Ontario, what's actually happening is the Bee Association of Ontario is suing uh, or has taken like a filed a lawsuit against a company in relation to neonicotoids, uh, which is a I can't remember. I think it's a herbicide. I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyways, basically what it does is it, it, it uh, allows you put it on before you, when you like. It's like a coating that goes around the seed, and you when you put the seed in the ground, the plant grows, obviously, and then um, I believe it's, I think it's to do with, oh gosh, I believe it's to do with, is that sugar beets there? Yes. Um, let me just do this before I forget about it. Sugar beets not accepted, accept, yeah. sugar beets is not accepted there. I guess those are all potatoes, yeah. All right. What about on this side? Huh? Huh? There we go. Nice. Oh, well, that's pretty sweet, actually. That's this is a pretty nice freight station. I'm not gonna lie to you. Ooh, that is pretty sweet. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, so the Ontario B so B Associate Association of Ontario is uh, filing a lawsuit against people who make the neonicotides and whatnot. And the neonicotide is something that you put on the outside of the seed, which helps it stay resistant to certain things when it's growing up. Uh, but the problem is people are saying that the neonicotoids are the ones that are causing the bee deaths in Ontario. Uh, it's, it's really confusing, actually, because in some situations, um, they, people say it's related to the neonicotoids. In other situations, people are saying it's not related at all. So it's really hard to uh, see through the mud, so to speak. Anyways, ooh, that's a bit of a tight turn. I did not did not make that turn very well, apparently. All right, let's see if I can't do that again. No. Ah, oh, come on. All right, this is not going to work my way, I don't think. What if I could drive straight underneath that? Probably. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. That was easier than turning, apparently. Watch me still get stuck, too. Whew. Anyways, what if you can sell them right here, too? What's the deal with that? Maybe that's where you can buy them? That seems strange. Anyways, I think that'll be it for today, folks. My name's Ian Robson. This has been Farming Simulator 2013 for the last episode of Lendia Canal. Let me know what you guys think about the next map or what map we should play on. Anyways, catch you guys later.